Good morning everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And today I will continue reading from my Guru's blog, His Eminence the 25th, Sam Toko Rinpoche. And the topic will be Love Without Agenda. And today I'll be doing part 16. And as usual, a picture to share with you. This is picture of Chogyam Trumpa Rinpoche. And as you can see, He's quite different from what we expect from a Rinpoche. Part 16. Love without agenda. If you are starving, grab whatever food you can eat. If the building is burning, the fireman is scary. Just never mind lah. If he is going to fill you up while he is going down, feel away. You know, I can die what? Think about it. That's how people are. You are in a burning building and the fireman comes in. You don't like the way he looks. He's too skinny, he's too fat, his eyes twitch and I'm not going with you. He's a pervert. Dear, that's what people do. They look at the small picture. They don't look at the big picture. You are burning in samsara. You are wasting your life away. Your time is withering away. It's disappearing and then you are still saying... But it has to be this way, this way, or this way, or I'm not going to be a Buddha. You are like, what? Yeah, I'm not going to be a Buddha. I'm going to stay in samsara. I'm going to go to hell and you can't do anything about it. And you're like, ha 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 ha, good luck. That's what you, are, you would like to say, but since you have bodhisattva vows, you go, Oh no, compassion. I will teach you. I will help you. Never mind. Never mind. Come to Rinpoche. Tell Rinpoche what's the matter. Come, 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 come. Kiss, kiss. I hate you, Rinpoche. You are mean. You scream. You tell me off. You embarrass me. Oh, I'm sorry. Rinpoche is wrong. Rinpoche will do Vrajat Sattva tonight. Rinpoche is wrong. Is sorry. Rinpoche is so sorry for screaming at you. So sorry. Can Rinpoche prostrate to you? No. Please can Rinpoche prostrate and offer kata to you and say he is sorry and do a 35 confessional Buddha retreat for screaming at you. No. Oh well, what can Rinpoche do to purify his karma? Let me think about it. That's how people are. It reached it reach the level where Rinpoche have to confess their actions and purify their negative karma to students. The students all sit there and go, you can't do that to me. You can't say this to me. You can't act like that to me. I can't. You can't do this to me. And you are unskillful. And that's not my way. That is not my type. I'm not ready. I'm ready. I'm partly ready. I may, I am maybe ready. I am not ready anymore. And you are like, what? And you are looking at them going, all right, dear student, Rinpoche, can you tell teacher Rinpoche what confessional Buddhas, so, sorry, what confessional prayers he should do to do that bad karma to purify you? Hmm, let me think about it. Oh dear. That's how it's become. Rinpoches are under scrutiny. Teachers are under fire. Teachers are scrutinized for everything. The way they dress, the way they eat, the way they look, the pimple on their face, whether they are beautiful, whether they are groomed, they have hair, they don't have hair. They are scrutinized. They are watched and checked out for everything. And any little mistake, aha, but what about if Rinpoche points out your mistake? Cannot. Bad, Rinpoche, bad. So how do you help people become enlightened when you tell them a lie? You are wonderful, you have no ego, you are generous, you are not lazy, you have no subtle obscurations and defilements. You be exactly as you are. Keep doing what you are doing and you know what? See you in Kacho heaven. See you in Vrajayogini's heaven. Why you want to be why why you want the teacher to lie? They can't lie. They can't tell you the truth. What do you want the teachers to do? So the teacher's kind of stuck. 
So what this teacher does is, ah, uh, just tell them whether they like it or not. Why? Time is short and I don't have time to pussyfoot around like a little cat. No time. You don't have time and I don't have time. My time is short and some of you, time is even shorter. And in some of your cases, very short. And that's the truth. Just think these days, Rinpoches go to students to ask for purification practices for scolding them. I'm sorry for scolding you. Where got like that? That's what Kenso Rinpoche told me in the monastery before. Pretty much soon, you want me to apologize to you. He screamed at me and it woke me up. When Kenso Rinpoche screamed at me, I got screamed at, at many times. But I didn't complain about it. When he screamed at me, it woke me up and I thought, why is he screaming at me and not the other students? Initially, I thought, oh, because he didn't see what I really am, who I really am. And then when I woke up, I said, no, I needed it. Because why? That student stayed in the monastery. I have to go out and I have to deal with the public. And I have to deal with criticism. And I have to deal with disappointments. And I have to deal with people lying and tricking me and breaking commitments and breaking samayas and giving up and going away and coming. That's what Ganchen Rinpoche also said to me. I have to deal with all that they didn't. So Rinpoche got me ready and now I realize. So for all the times Rinpoche told me things that were wrong about me, I know they were wrong, but he, is still, he still insists that I am. Now I realize. Because I'm accused of things I do not, sorry, I don't do now. But it doesn't bother me because Rinpoche already got me ready. Now I realize the people he didn't criticize in the same house and I saw them doing, some of the monks were not studying. They were not meditating. They were sleeping and they were eating. They were sleeping and they even watched movies, which I did later. And he didn't say anything to them. In fact, he praised them. Some of these monk students, they were filled with arrogance. They expect you to put a cushion for them. And they, came, they come in front of Kenzo Rinpoche with their robes like, I'm also a great master. I saw it and I am like, I'm groveling around. I'm prostrating to Rinpoche. I massage him. I wash his clothes. I'm a slave and I'm always wrong. But what I realize now is these people are still there. And they don't have to do any work. Why? I have no idea. But I have to go out. I was kicked out. I was sent out. I was forced out. One time I was trying to escape Ganden. Now I'm trying to run back in. That is how samsara is. Now I'm like, I wish I was in Ganden. I wish I was in Ganden. I don't hate Malaysia. If you live here as a normal lay person, fine. If you are a monk trying to spread the Dharma, don't be a teacher in Malaysia. Anything else, wonderful country, wonderful. Let me make it better. Don't be a teacher in samsara, the end. Don't talk about Malaysia anywhere on the planet. Don't be a Dharma teacher. They got their rocks ready. Oh yeah, that's the truth. Don't be a Dharma teacher. The expectation on you is beyond the Buddha. The things you ask your Dharma teacher, you wouldn't even ask the Buddha. You wouldn't. You would be too shy. So what I know is, now is the times my teacher put me down. Now I know why. The times my teacher accused me, many times. You know, sometimes they screamed at me. You can ask mommy, my other teacher, would scream at me in public, and I would never react back. There was one time I was in Tupton Darjeeling Centre. His Holiness Ganden Tri Rinpoche was coming to our centre to give a Dharma talk. So we are in our centre with Geshe Sotrim Geltsen, getting the centre ready. I mean, we were really rushed for time. We just finished painting the Gompa. It's the prayer hall, Gompa, G-O-M-P-A. We are in the gompa, like this is a gompa. 
putting the statues on and getting the last touches, and Ganden Tree Rinpoche showing up any time. That Ganden Tree Rinpoche, Jetsun Jampa Sen Pen. And so, I was in charge of the altars as usual. I love it. So I put the scriptures on the altar because it was different layers in the different cabinets with windows. I put that this. I put the statues there. I put it here and there so it wouldn't be empty and would look beautiful and it was my job. And when Geshela walked in, he looked at that and he says, he screamed, he screamed. I mean, he was so uncharacteristic. He said, who put that in there? I'm like, and Rinpoche imitates a scared face. My ego was so embarrassed because there were so many people watching, but another part of me was saying, but that was what you told me to do. And Geshela screamed, who put that there? And then the other students kind of walked away and I was thinking, traitor, traitor because they were like helping with the chairs. They opened the cabinet for me, and they were like handing it to me. I'm like, traitor, you wait, wait, wait till you need help, and or wait till we get to sock, and you need to make offerings. I will say I'm not available. So I went, and Rinpoche raised finger, and Geshela said, I didn't say for you to do that. I didn't tell you to do that. We don't have enough time. Ganden Tree Rinpoche showing up any minute. And do you th think it would look good for him to walk in the gompa and you are on the ladder putting things on there? I didn't tell you to do that. And he was going on and on screaming. So everybody around him was like this, folding their hands. I prostrated. I folded myself and I said, I'm sorry. And I prostrated. I was so embarrassed. I was angry. I was embarrassed and not angry, but not angry in a bad way. I was thinking, what did I miss here? And I kept trying to explain to myself what happened. I was around 17, 18. And then, like 45 minutes later, Ganden Tree Rinpoche still didn't show up. We found out he is late. There was no handphones at that time in the 80s, right? So Geshe La just sat there. Sorry. So Geshe La just sat down on his throne and he says, All right, Ganden Tree Rinpoche is late. And you know, my first thought was, See? I didn't say it, but I said that. I was thinking it in my mind. See? And I checked my ego out. And Geshe La said, Actually, my name was Bircher in America. Actually, Bircher didn't do anything wrong. He did it right. I just didn't think we have had any time. The end. Um, and I'm like, but that's what I said. Okay, I will end this session now here. And I do hope that you'll join me for my next session as it gets, you know, interesting when Rinpoche um, got that huge scolding from Geshe La for something that he actually did right. And... And as you can see how Rinpoche responded, you know, as a student, to be humble and prostrate to Geshe La immediately with folded hands. And that is what we should do, humble down. Even though our guru is scolding us, maybe for nothing wrong that we've done, but we should be humble and examine our mind. So that is what Rinpoche is um, teaching us, you know, in this uh, sharing. Okay, so thank you for sharing your time with me and I will do complete this with a completion dedication and I will do it in English. May the precious body mind, where it is not born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. May the precious emptiness, where it is not born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. May this merit accumulated by myself and others beneficially serve all sentient beings and the Buddha Dharma, and especially may the essential teachings of the unerring Master Tsongkhapa become clear and enduring. In all my rebirths, may I not be parted from perfect gurus, and let me enjoy the abundance of the Dharma. 
Perfecting the quality stages and paths, may I quickly attain the rank of Vajadara Buddha. By this virtue, may I quickly realize Guru Buddhahood and transfer each sentient being into the enlightened state. May all conditive conditions arise and all obstacles be pacified in order to increase infinitely the doctrine of spiritual King Tsongkhapa. By the merits of the three times of myself and others, may the doctrine of Lama Tsongkhapa blaze forever. At dawn or dusk, at night or midnight, may the three jewels grant us their blessings. May they help us to achieve all realizations and sprinkle the paths of our, of our lives with various signs of auspiciousness. May the holy teachers have long lives. May the enlightened activities be fully displayed in the ten directions. And may the brightness of the teachings of Lama Tsongkhapa continuously dissipate the veil of darkness covering the beings of the three realms. In this land encircled by snow mountains, source of every benefit and joy, may Lord Tenzin Gyatso Cherenzik remain in this life until samsara's end. Home, grant me here and now appropriate attainments without exception. Grant increase of the entourage, teachings and wealth, O mighty Shukden. Right, thank you for sharing your time with me and please do join me with my next sharing. Thank you.